Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here, and I am back with the most explosive build you've ever witnessed with those sweet, innocent eyes of yours. The Molten Miner. One-shotting bosses. Demolishing legions. And blinding myself as I play. This build has it all. Remember to use the handy colour guide below to jump to any section in particular. Keep in mind however, this colour system won't work if you're watching in cinema mode on YouTube. The Molten Miner relies on some interesting mechanics, but the biggest surprise of all is... We aren't playing a saboteur. Instead, we will be choosing the Dead Eye Ascendancy. You'll see why soon, but this allows for crazier clear, and with the expensive version, much more single target damage. Though like usual we will be starting the build gear and link section with a budget version, the true version of this build does not come into play until you invest a lot more into it. This build clears with the chain mechanic, allowing our fireball to bounce between mobs like, well, I guess arc, but way way cooler. If investing, we even use a weapon swap for the expensive version of this build, switching between a Sire of Shards for Nova Clear and a massively plus to level gems bow for crazy single target. But let's start small, shall we? For those of you who like to follow along at home, there is a paste bin below for this budget version, but I'm just going to jump right into it. The budget version of this build is a tiny bit more expensive than my other budget versions, but we're going to give ourselves a budget of 250 chaos, which is, at the time of recording in the Softcore Metamorph League, only about one and a quarter exalted orbs. The main item in the budget version of this build is Tremor Rod, Military Staff. This rod is where you're going to link your mine skill, and this is both for clear and single target. A 5-link Tremor Rod is going to run you back around about 30 chaos. The links for your Tremor Rod are as follows. Your main skill is Fireball, as we would have known by now. This is being supported by the level 10 Blast Chain Mine in the Tremor Rod, and then we are also linking Minefield, Controlled Destruction, Combustion, and Trap and Mine Damage. If you do happen to have a 6 link, you can then link Fire Penetration in there as well. For your helmet, you want to use the Brine Crown. This helmet is absolutely amazing in keeping us alive. With great life, good cold res, cannot be frozen, and reduce cold damage taken with some armor, this helmet is brilliant and very underrated. The Brine Crown is going to run you back about 7 chaos. In our Brine Crown, we have a 3 link and a 1 link. In the 3 link, you're going to be linking Curse on Hit with Orb of Storms and Assassin's Mark. The Lonely link is where we will be situating our Val Righteous Fire. This is to be activated during boss fights. 
Our chess piece requires no links whatsoever because we are using a Calm's heart. You can grab a 20 Chaos Cam's heart corrupted from the store. With our gloves, we are just looking for some good life and resistances. So these will only run you about five Chaos. Other options do include the Machina gloves or Culling Strike gloves, but these are going to be much more expensive. So we won't bother about that right now. In our four link in our gloves, we will be linking Flame Dash and Smoke Mine, our two movement skills, with Arcane Surge and Increased Duration. Our boots, we will give ourselves a budget of 10 Chaos, and like the gloves, we're looking for life and resistances. In the boots, we have our little aura setup, which just includes Herald of Ash, Summon Skitterbots, and Enlighten. We just need a level 3 Enlighten for this, we don't need to bother with a level 4. If you don't have access to a level 3 Enlighten, don't worry, the build can still function without it. The last link in our boots is a Wave of Conviction. This is used on bosses to apply fire exposure. For our rings, we are using as follows. First of all, a Circle of Anguish with the mod Herald of Ash has increased buff effect. 80% or higher is fine, and this will run you about 30 chaos. With the other ring, we're just looking for resistances and life. Maybe a little bit of strength if you can find it. We're going to give a budget of 10c for this ring. For our belt, we are just looking for strength, resistances, and life. Good 15c shall work for this. Our amulet, we are going to be using a Zoff's Blood. This is great for the strength it gives, as well as the fire penetration and the covering enemies with ash. This amulet runs us about 65 chaos. We then have five jewel sockets. For the jewels, four of them at least, I would recommend just getting one stat of critical strike multiplier, whether that is two fire skills or global, and a little bit of life. These will run you about 10 chaos each. And the other jewel is a Rolling Flames unique jewel for our fireball. This will only be one chaos. With the remaining 17 chaos, we can easily fill out our flasks. My favorite flask to use is a Blood of Karui life flask. We can then use a second life flask of your choosing, a diamond flask for crits, a quicksilver flask for speed, and a mana flask. On the Mana Flask, it is good if we have the Enduring mod. This means we can spam our minds over and over again and we will never run out of mana. Well done! We have made it to 250 Chaos worth of gear and your miner is ready. The gear for the endgame version of this build is pretty expensive, but it also changes quite a few things. The main thing that changes is, as you can see, I'm actually holding a bow here. For our single target, we are using a bow with much plus levels to gems, as I did state earlier in the guide. This kind of bow will run you around about 30 exalts. Now the links for our single target are as follows. A fireball linked with a level 4 empower, and high impact mine support, awakened chain for big chains, combustion support, and trap and mine damage. We then have a quiver that is corrupted for skills chain plus one times for an additional chain, meaning our fireball comes up to five chains. The quiver also has increased global crit strike chance, global critical strike multiplier, and a little bit of life as well. The chess piece does not change, we are still using a Chaos Heart. The Circle of Anguish, however, does change a little bit because we're also adding increased fire damage while affected by Herald of Ash. This ring is around about 8 exalts with that extra mod. The other ring we are using comes with a Curse Enemies with level 8 Assassin's Mark on hit, also a little bit of life and some resistances to cap us out. The amulet we are changing from a Zoff's Blood to a Great Damage Amulet with a plus one to all fire skill gems, some life, 
global crit strike chance, global crit strike multiplier, and some attributes as well to keep us all capped up there. Our belt is an amazing belt. I always use this belt in most of the builds that I make because I managed to craft such an amazing belt. Uh, but it is a uh, Stygian Vise, and we are also using some Crit Strike Multi and Fire Damage Dispels as well as Life in here. With the boots, nothing is changing much. Great resistances, good move speed, and some life as well. With the helmet, we are actually using a Crown of the Inward Eye. This is just giving us quite a bit more damage and uh, a lot of life as well. This can be used in the budget version if you would like as well. But the, uh, the Brian King helmet is very, very nice. Our gloves, we're using Hands of the High Templar. I managed to snag these gloves up for about 6x, but I'd say they're probably worth about 10. We've got Duration and Trap and Mine uh, gem plus levels, meaning that our uh, Smoke Mine... Uh, and our Flame Dash are getting great levels up. We also have Spell Critical Strike Chance and Elemental Weakness on hit. With our Amulet, we are allocating Whispers of Doom, meaning that we can apply two curses, the Elemental Hit on our Gloves and the Assassin's Mark Hit in our Ring. Our Flasks, Blood of the Kurui, as I said, is a great Flask. We're switching the second Life Flask for a Bottled Faith. This is just much, much more damage. The other flasks are the same, Quicksilver, Diamond, and a Eternal Mana Flask. Enduring is a good one. Now the interesting thing is our weapon swap on this build. Our weapon swap swaps to a Sire of Shards. Now we are using both Staff and a Bow in this endgame version. Uh, now you can see here that in the Sire of Shards we have our Fireball linked with Chain Support, Minefield Support, Blast Chain Mine Support, Combustion Support, and Trap and Mine Damage. This is just meaning, as I can demonstrate right here for you, we throw this down, lots of Nova Fireballs everywhere, and these ones chain three times. This is absolutely amazing for clear. This is pretty much it for the endgame version of this build. The last thing I will do is just quickly go over a couple of changes to the skill gem setup. Because we don't need a curse on hit anymore, we can use an immortal call cast when damage taken in our helmet, which is very, very nice. For the tree for this build, the budget version and the endgame version are almost identical, except for one small little difference. However, I'm just going to run you through the budget version here, and then I'll talk about the difference for the endgame version. We start as a raider, as I have said before, and we come out of raider through evasion and life into finesse. We come down through finesse and we hit herbalism. Straight through herbalism, we make our way up to acrobatics, and we finish off the first 20 points with a little bit of life. We then move on to 40 points. We take our first ascendancy point here, which is far shot. We will be moving to ricochet very soon. But with the next 20 points, we come through blood drinker, come up through clever construction, devastating devices, and high explosives. Keep coming up, and we hit written in blood. Then moving forward, we start off these mine and damage duration nodes. Then moving to 60 points. The next 20 points, we're taking volatile mines, successive detonations, then we come down through the shadow area, picking up trickery, blood siphon, saboteur, and assassination. We then start to move our way through to the witch area. We are then also taking, in the next 20 points, ricochet. Then we come back up through here into the witch area, prodigal perfection, annihilation, cruel preparation, and heart of flame. You will also notice that, uh, oh, I haven't selected them here, but you take phase acrobatics here as well. And then into the 100 points. 100 points phase acrobatics should also be selected there. We then pick up lots of jewel sockets. Jewel here, jewel here. We come up through and we finish off with some firewalker and heart and soul. Then finally the end game. The end game we are picking up endless munitions as well as powerful precision. Now powerful precision is for the budget version of this build. However, for the end game version, we do not want this and instead we want gathering winds. The reason behind that is in the end game version we are relying on our clear much more with chain, meaning that if we have powerful precision, meaning 
projectiles pierce all nearby targets, they will not chain appropriately. So that is why we take Gathering Winds. Great move speed and action speed buff as well, which is quite nice. And to finish off the tree, we're pretty much just taking a couple more jewel sockets, getting some spell crit, and we do have a reduced mana reservation node there as well. That is pretty much it for the tree. To level this character, it's actually really straightforward. I like to use quite a few different leveling uniques, but some good ones are Loctonial Caress and Gold Rim. Gold Rim is great for elemental resistances, carrying through a lot of the game, and your Loctonial Caress are just giving you much more attack speed and cast speed with a little bit of life. The weapons that you want to use from level 1 are Life Sprig, Driftwood Wands. I only have one here, but you can dual wield these. And in terms of skills, it's super, super simple. At level 1, you can pick up an explosive trap in the uh, vendor from the raider. And linking this to Onslaught support and uh, any other supports you would like to is a really good idea. Onslaught's going to give you lots of move speed to zip through absolutely everything. Once you reach level 12, you want to start using Icicle Mine. Icicle Mine is going to carry you through the rest of the game pretty much until you reach your Tremor Rod at level 41. Now with Icicle Mine, the Raider cannot actually pick up this gem. So if you do have another character, it is best if you purchase it on that character and then transfer it over. But you can start using Icicle Mine at level 12 and this will carry you all the way through. Remember to keep upgrading your gear and making sure your resistances are at a good level throughout everything. And once we hit level 41, as I said, we can use our Tremor Rod. Tremor Rod is going to carry us through all the way to the end game because that is the end version weapon that we are using if you are playing the budget version of this build. So you can switch to Fireball at that point as well, and you're going to have heaps and heaps of fun. That is pretty much it for the leveling tips. If you've never played a miner before, the playstyle is a little bit different to other builds. I'm just going to jump into a map here with the endgame version of this build and show you how to play it, but the budget version is going to play very, very similarly. So, let's just go for this right now. I'm going to choose one of my favourite maps with a... With... If you've never played a miner before, the playstyle is quite different to some other builds. I'd never. If you've never played a. If you've never played a miner before, which I hadn't before I made this build, the playstyle is pretty different to other builds. So I'm just going to do my best to show you how to play a miner. It is. If you've never played a miner before which I hadn't before I made this build, the playstyle is pretty different to some other builds. So I'm just going to jump into a map here with the end game version of this build, but you'll also be able to take these tips for the budget version as well. It's pretty much the exact same playstyle. We're going to jump into a colonnade map, which is one of my favourite maps. And this is a tier 16 map, so you can definitely see it in action. Let's jump into the map right here. First off, we are starting to put down our mines, and then we are detonating them. So there are two buttons to use. We throw our mines on the ground, and then we detonate. Now these mines are going to be, fireballs I should say, are going to be chaining between everything in this map, clearing amazingly. So we're just going to keep going through, and we will see all this. Our flasks are quite important, especially the mana flask. If we do lots of spamming on our mines, we are going to run out of mana, mana, and I will show you that right now. If I spam this, our mana goes all the way down. Oh no! And then uh, we can hit the flask to get our mana right back up. This is mostly going to be helpful with the boss, however. Now, as I'm getting to the boss here, the loot filter you are hearing is a custom-made loot filter that I have made by myself, which is exclusively available to uh, uh, to people watching Twitch, uh, subscribers on Twitch. So keep that in mind if you want to pop over and subscribe for a lovely, lovely loot filter sound. Okay, now we are at the boss. I'm going to weapon swap here to my bow. Now this is for the budget version, so uh, not the budget version, this is for the expensive version. So on the budget version, you don't need to weapon swap. You can just keep using 
So just to clear the trash, I'm just going to chuck a couple of mines down. It'll clear the trash here. And then we pop as many mines down as we can. Hit everything and explode. Oh, he went back inside. So let's just try that again. You can see, you know, wasn't the greatest there. But basically, let's try that again with no enemies. We throw all of our traps on the ground. As many as we can fit. We then spam all of our flasks and hit detonate. And a massive chain happens and we deal heaps and heaps of damage. So look, that was a little bit sketchy of a map, but you could probably see how the mine play style works. There's insane damage and insane clear with this build. And I'm quite happy I didn't die just then. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you haven't subscribed yet, it would mean the world to me if you just clicked down below and hit that sub button. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to catch me on Twitch. Uh, there is a link below for that as well. So we're just going to watch some gameplay here of boss killing, including a couple of sketchy fights, but you can see how the build works against the end game content. Thanks so much guys, and until next time, Badger out. Time has no meaning here. Your pain will be endless. Very nice. Very nice. Better than you. Damage looks great. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, let's let's test it here though. I shall cast you into a pit of infinite torches. Oh, yeah, the damage is good. The damage is good. Mm, that felt nice. That felt nice. This build can do against Cirrus. Alright. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> What's this? A real challenge. You finally caught my attention. Oh, ho, ho. already phased. That feels good. That feels good. All right, gotta wait for him. Gotta wait for him. The others found strength in their projections. They became reliant on him. Not so foolish. Die. No, I don't want to die. Be silent. I do not want to die. Serious? That damage though, yeah, yeah, that's some damage. Yeah, bro, I'm super happy with this build, seriously. Oh, it feels good. It feels good to get to this stage. There we are. Really interesting enough to warrant all this pain. Die. Oh. Oh, this feels so good, guys. This feels so good. <laughs> I've done it. I've made a good build. <laughs> <laughs> We are out of potions. We are out of potions. Which is not good. Oh no, we died. We got we ran out of we ran out of potions. <laughs> Cause we were stupid and spammed them. 
Single target swap is silly though. That's good boss damage. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> We're playing silly now. We we got cocky. We got cocky. Really hope they'll be too busy beating summoners and forget to nerf mines. Oh, 100%. 100%. We got cocky at the end. We got super cocky. Well. You missed me one-shotting a level 8 conqueror. Like, I, I actually actually one-shot a level 8 Conqueror just before. Oh my goodness, we're getting so cocky. We're being stupid. We're being stupid, guys. <laughs> it was almost- it was almost deathless and then we were like, Oh wait, no, let's just actually die a few times. Just for being silly. Ah, oh, damn it. What the heck? What the heck is this doing? What the fuck? There we are. Alright. We got the Awakener's Orb. Nice. We got a Prophet Crown, Ivory Watchstone. Alright, that's alright. That's alright. Not too shabby if you ask me. But also pretty shabby because we. All right, I need to pay attention to this. Nice way to test, yeah. Ugh, all right. I may not remember. Father, no. Putrefy, rot, spoil, and fester. I'll do something. All right, not too bad. Not gonna lie, this is feeling good. Father, no. Oof, that was close. My mana is gone. Oh, sees we were just standing in the middle of nothing. That was bad. That was a bad move. Did we still not do enough damage? Ah, oh, there we are. There we are. Can face tank metamorphs, but why not delve? Yeah. was a bit sketchy just then. It was a little bit sketchy.
And we got it. Ah, that was kind of nice. Alright, come on, give me that. Give me that jewel, give me that jewel. We had the one death. One death was uh, a little bit annoying. Ah, no jewel. No jewel. Hubris circlet. Oh well, that was a good test though. That was a good test of the, uh, of the... At least. With your death, this nightmare may finally end. Better. Keep Ugh, we didn't quite one shot. It was close. Oh, two rings, nice. Molten one, save me from this unending nightmare. Nothing good there. And nothing good there. Oh, what was this one? Huh. Not amazing. Got him. Nice. 